Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in again. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. You know how things work these days, subscribing doesn't actually mean you'll see stuff. Anyway, today we're getting into something different. I've been looking for ways to ditch Google Photos, and I've stumbled upon this thing called Image, and it's been out for a little while. It's basically like having your own photo and video backup server that you control. Pretty cool. Let's figure out how to set this up together. So here's the deal with Image. It's an open source project, which means the code is freely available and people are always improving it. Basically, you run a tiny bit of software on your own computer or server and it becomes your very own photo and video library. Your phone can automatically back up everything to it because there is a nice app. There's also a nice web interface to view your stuff and it even does some cool things like organize your photos by the people in them with facial recognition. If we take a look at the image website, we'll see that there is a, an option for a demo portal, which I've opened here. And as you can see, it looks very much like Google Photos while still being quite separate. One thing I have noticed, which I'll say off the bat, is that there isn't a native photo editor. So unlike Google Photos, this is where things get a little bit different, but I'm sure things like that will be built in later. However, that excluded, it's a pretty nifty setup. It's got a very fast interface, and I was blown away at the processing speed of files being uploaded onto the server. And I thought that was really, really cool. I also noticed that over a few forums like Reddit and things, there are quite a lot of people still trying to learn how to set this up. So I thought I'd create a video about that today and help you do just that. Now, as always, we do run our server on Windows 11 Pro, so you will have to tweak if you're going to use a different operating system to get this up and running. But ultimately, the configuration shouldn't be that dissimilar. Over on the GitHub page, you will find this project has over 25,000 stars, which in itself is proof how great this project actually is. It's got 166 releases, and if we go back to the very first release, we can see that was on February 8th, 2022. Now, that's a lot of releases in that time period. On the image website at the very top, you'll also notice that there's a warning, a disclaimer, that the project is under very active development. Expect bugs and changes, and do not use it as the only way to store your photos and videos. And I second that. So we're going to be installing it today with Dockage, which is a Portainer alternative. Um, I do have a video in the description below if you would like to install Dockage. However, if you want to, you can just use your standard Portainer or you can use your standard Docker Compose up. Anything you like. We are going to be using uh, an ENV file today uh, and we'll get into that now. So you'll see this is the Docker Compose file. This has all the services that image is going to run. Obviously, this is going to be running on Docker. And if you, you should know what Docker is if you're watching this, but if you don't because you're a newbie, don't stress. I have a video in the description for that as well. Go and install Docker. Go and install Dockage. You can find all those in the, link, uh, in, the, in the links in the description below. And then come back to the video at this point, and you can progress with us. For those that already have Docker installed, we can pro progress. So you'll see the image server. Sorry, image service. You can find, as you can see, there are references into the ENV file, which I have next door. You can see that I'm running this on port 2283, which is not the standard port, which is 3001. You can change that if you want on the left-hand side of the colon, but don't change anything on the right. It does have a Redis database as well, and it's got microservices and also a machine learning uh, part. Now, I do have a few things in Docker volumes here because when it comes to Postgres data, it can get a little bit funny with Windows um, volume paths and such. So apart from that, that's all there. The only thing we're going to really change um, is on the ENV. This will all be in the description below as well. So it's a very easy copy and paste job for you. Um, if we go over to the uh, ENV file, which you'll see here, I've selected my up location where I'm going to store all my photos that go onto the server in this directory which is on my E drive, Keith, documents, Docker stuff, image, uploads. I suggest you get a similar directory structure. And I've also limited this to the latest release at the time, uh, which was 1941. 
I don't want this thing updating randomly uh, and pulling things down, especially if you've got Watchtower running, because as it said on the main page, heavy bugs, things like that, and it can easily break. Uh, and if you do come back here to update this in the future, make sure you make an entire backup of your image volumes and your image upload directory. The next part is going to be creating a database password. You can just randomly type all your things in here if you'd like. Um, I hope that's not too long. I know sometimes it can be a little bit too long. Maybe make it a bit shorter. Um, and that's fine. And the values below this line, as it says, you do not need to change them. So don't change those details. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all. You can just go to the link below. We're then going to go over to my Brave browser in dockage. We're going to hit compose. I'm going to select all of the default stuff and paste in my services. We're going to give the stack name image and we're going to hit save. If we hit edit one more time and scroll down, we'll see that there's a space here for uh, ENVs. So if we go back to the notepad, go across to the env file after you've edited your sections you can copy this again all linked below we will put everything in the env file and this is what i love about dockage it, it makes everything a lot more easier especially for beginners uh, of docker um, which are really really cool so we're going to hit save all we've got to do at this point is hit the start button and it's going to start pulling image down from the web and there, everything has downloaded and started for us. Uh, and that did take about two or three minutes, and I'm on a gigabit connection, so don't worry if that takes a little while for you. So with everything up and running, we can go down here to Image Server, and if you're not running Dockage, all you've got to do is open a, a, a tab, go to localhost 2283, or whatever port you set. In my case, all I have to do is just hit this 2283 button. <clears throat> and here is our Image Web Server. So all we've got to do here is click getting started and set up some details. This is the first user on the system and it will automatically set us up as the administrator. Just pop your details in that you just created. And that's it. We are in. We can do some basic setup at this point. So we're gonna, of course we're gonna go for a dark theme. Who doesn't go for a dark theme in this day and age? Easier on the eyes and we'll enable the storage template engine. Image has this feature called storage templates, which is super handy. It basically lets you decide how you want your photos and videos organized on your server. Do you want them in folders by year, by month, maybe through the date in? Well, with the storage template, you can customize all that stuff uh, and it's pretty simple to do, as you can see on this page. Once you're done, you'll be presented with the default screen uh, and it kind of gives you an indicator of what space is left on your system based on the hard drive on your server, of course. What's used, what's, what isn't. <clears throat> One thing I did notice about Image is that it was showing my entire hard drive usage rather than just the usage of the Image folder. So I'm not sure if that's uh, something that's been developed in the future or maybe a misconfiguration on my end. Um, maybe someone can point that out and that would be very helpful. Um, but apart from that, that looks really, really cool. Now, there is a mobile app for this, I know, on Android. I'm pretty sure there's one on iOS as well. So if you go to the Play Store on Android, you can download Image. If you want to set this up on your own domain, um, check out my Nginx Proxy Manager video below, which you can also set up very easily today. And I'll link that in the description below. And um, after setting that up in Nginx Proxy Manager, you can see we do have uh, an SSL certificate uh, and a domain name as well, which is really, really cool. Um, you can now use this uh, if your domain name is external and can be accessed from the World Wide Web to connect your app um, directly to your server, uh, which is really cool as well. Um, and I'll show you that now. First of all, let's upload our very first image. We will love it. Here's my sausage pie. What a first image to put on this server. Uh, just as kind of a benchmark to see where things go with this. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll hop over to my phone and show you the setup there. Now, over on our mobile app, 
um, if we put in our domain name that we've just created, and as you can see, our sausage pie is in there and the app is created. Everything is here. We don't have any albums yet. We haven't shared things with anyone. Um, but our sausage pie is there. There we go. Can't go wrong with that. What a fabulous app. Uh, and the other cool thing about this is that if you see the little cloud icon at the top there, if you hit that cloud icon, you can select backup albums on your phone, which means that it acts exactly like Google Photos would in, in the respect that it backs up all your photos and videos. Very simple, very easy to deploy when you know how. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.